Another video about keeping all my uh, my small gaggle of uh, cars on the road so I can drive. Them. Um, this time I'm working on my 1985 635 CSI Eurospec. I absolutely love these the E24 design and the E28 design. Both of them are terrific. Uh, the E24 in particular is a great uh, coupe design. It's one of my favorite, uh, barring you know getting a um, an early E9 coupe. And E24 was kind of the next best thing. Uh, it's a good looking car. It's a good GT car. I've had it, like I said, for five or six years. Uh, put about 25,000 miles on it. It's got over 200,000, like 200,000 and something. It just turned over 200,000. So hopefully it's got many more miles to go in it. Um, so anyway, today I'm working on the radiator and uh, basically gonna be replacing the radiator because I developed a crack in the top driver's side corner where the main hose goes into the radiator and uh, just caused a, uh, a leak, basically. Uh, I tried to JB weld it, and uh, that didn't work very well, not surprising. Um, so basically, I located a uh, pre owned uh, radiator on eBay that was $80 shipped. Uh, new ones were $170 to $250, something like that. So decided to save some money and recycle a used part uh, for a radiator. I figure, you know, I mean, it looks solid, so I, I don't think it's going to be a problem uh, as far as that's concerned. So I'm going to not take the fan off. I'm going to leave it on. I think you can slip the radiator past the, the fan. So this looks pretty easy except for some of the lines that go to the transmission cooler uh, at the bottom of the radiator. They look a little bit difficult to get to so that's probably not going to be that easy but other than that it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to get to it. This is the drain plug it's um, broken <laughs> so I'm not gonna be able to use the drain plug to drain the radiator I'm gonna have to just kind of pull that lower radiator hose off and drain the coolant into the uh, into a bucket and um, it'll kind of be messy but that's gonna be the only way to do it you can't really see it but way down there there's this line down here that's below this air intake boot that's the lower transmission cooler line and same size as the upper bolt that was here all right so this is the lower hose that goes to the transmission cooler. Okay, so in the process also of getting that lower transmission cooler line, I removed this intake boot that goes right here, that goes from the back of the headlight housing uh, into the intake right here. Um, basically, that allowed me some extra clearance to get to the uh, that lower bolt. Keep in mind that if you have a manual E24 or E28, you will not have to do that because um, there's no transmission cooler lines down there on a manual car. This is an automatic, so. Next thing is going to be to take off this bolt here, the bolts that hold on the radiator, one on each side, and it should come out after that. Pretty easy. It was kind of stuck in there, I think, just from years of, uh, you know, being in the car. And um, but definitely no need to take off the fan. Um, this is kind of just a quick job. So, so now I got to transfer this hardware, which is on. This is the old radiator right here. Um, you can see that's where it broke, and everything else is identical. The only difference is that right here, these plugs. Um, the top one I, is the same on the Euro car, but the lower one is totally different. There's a different style plug that goes in there. So I'm gonna have to transfer, I'm gonna have to just transfer both of them over. Um, I've already loosened them. All right, so um, I've decided to do the thermostat while I'm at it. Um, I don't know when the last time this was replaced. So I um, went ahead and ordered one up um, since I was replacing the lower radiator hose, I thought it'd be a good time to, to do the thermostat. Uh, just because if you have to replace it down the line, uh, you'd have to remove that lower hose anyway, so. Wow. That's a, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty rusty bolt. Is it possible this is the original thermostat from 1985? I don't know. Possibly.
there's some disturbing resistance. Definitely would be easier if the fan was removed, um, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'm gonna spray some PB Blaster on this bolt because I'm really worried that uh, it's gonna break. So what I was afraid of happening uh, did happen. Uh, basically, uh, the, um, the bolt broke on the bottom because it was seized in there and these bolts are old. So now it's gonna be a matter of uh, getting off the housing and sliding it off of what's the bolt that's left there and then getting out that bolt somehow extracting it and that's going to be uh probably not that easy so okay so i have to remove this here i, I can't get the stud off that, that broke off so so this is the culprit Right here, that's stud. So, really, what should have been a really quick job is now turning into a massive pain. So, basically, this bolt here uh, on the bottom uh, stripped out, and then when I tried to drill it out, I damaged the threads. So, what I did was I drilled out, and I'm just going to put this long bolt, and I'm going to put a nut on the back of it, and it should hold it. Um, so, instead of it threading into this right here, it's actually going to have a nut uh, on the other side of it. I know that's not um, ideal, and if it does leak, I can, I'll can i just take it out and I'll have to go buy one of these housings and, uh, and do that. But for now, I'm just going to try to put a, a nut in a bolt. So I did buy um, new bolts at the hardware store because the old ones were so corroded. So this is the bolt that I had to buy and then the nut uh, that's going to go on the other side of the uh, the one that I had to drill out. So hopefully this will do the trick. So just... And then these are tightened to only 10 pounds. All right, so I already put the gasket. This one here I had to get from the dealer. Um, it was not available. They, even the dealer had to special order it, so. Uh, but this basically should just slide on pretty easily. Alright, so I uh, got the new radiator in and um, bled the system, topped it up, everything came out good. Uh, not too bad of a job, except for the issues that I had uh, with the thermostat uh, housing bolts breaking. So other than that, it was a pretty straightforward job. Um, the uh, It's easy to bleed right here. Uh, definitely was easier than any of the um, E36s or E39s that I've owned. It's not fun sometimes working dealing with uh, newer BMW cooling systems and it seems like this one was pretty straightforward. Everything went back together, no leaks or anything. So a couple of tips if you're doing it for the first time, like me, um, a few things that would make it easier. Uh, definitely, if you're gonna do, if you're just doing the radiator, you can do it without taking off the fan, and that's 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 pretty straightforward. You can, you know, that's it slips out pretty easily. So that if you're doing a thermostat, uh, definitely um, soak those bolts in um, PB Blaster or some kind of a of a you know like WD-40 or something for as long as you can before you try to take off the thermostat. Um, but the bolts are like, there's two bolts that are on this side that are about that long and they're super thin. And um, they just, once they corrode in there, the metal bolt against the aluminum housing, um, it just, it, it, I had two, I broke the one in the car and then I had a parts car and I tried to pull off the thermostat housing from that car and I broke another one of the long bolts. And maybe some heat against the aluminum to get it to, um, to, to break the seal with the corrosion. It's a pain. Luckily, one good thing is that the, the whole housing comes off of the, um, out of the engine if you do end up breaking something on the thermostat. Um, if you have an automatic, like I do, and you're trying to get to the 
transmission cooler lines, they're, the lower one is a pain, definitely. So just gotta be patient with that. And the lower radiator hose, I would recommend putting it on the radiator before the radiator is bolted in or make sure that you have the radiator pushed all the way over to the left side because there's not much clearance in between the radiator, the lower outlet for the radiator and the frame rail. And then the other thing too, if you do remove the fan and it has not been removed in a long time, mine was on there really tightly. Like I, I would recommend buying the tool. You can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And um, I ended up making the tool and that just, I mean, it, just cause I didn't want to wait for, you know, three days or four days or however long, even longer to get the, the tool. Uh, I'm going to celebrate with a, uh, Good old New Mexico green chili beer, and uh, which I'm not even a huge fan of, but it's the last one that I have. So, yeah. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time on uh, whatever project I happen to to, uh, to tackle next. All right, all right, all right, all right. Seashells down by that seashore. Okay, so.